This video is brought to you by JetBrains PHP Storm. In our previous videos, we discussed how to get started using code coverage to determine if our code has enough tests. And one of the things I mentioned is how we should always integrate this into our continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline, but I didn't really say how. This video is out to rectify that problem by providing you with two options to integrate code coverage into your pipeline. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel, we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you follow so you can get our latest videos when they're published, and make sure you follow me at Scott Keck Warren on phpc.social and Twitter. Now, the simplest way to solve this problem is to add a simple script to our repository that checks the percentage of our code coverage versus our goal percentage. If our current code coverage is less than the goal percentage, then the test will fail. To do this, we first need to set up our run of PHP unit to export a coverage file using the dash dash coverage clover command line argument. This file is an XML file that contains a line by line output of what files are covered by tests and which aren't. Next, we need to create a script to read this value versus our required value. Because this is a PHP focused channel, we'll use PHP for this, but you can use your preferred language. In order to make this script as flexible as possible, we're going to want to make the coverage percentage easily editable, so we've made it an argument to the script. That way we can update it inside of our action YAML file as needed. Now we can integrate this into our GitHub action for our value object project. To do this, I'll include this file into my repository. I like to put it into the scripts directory so it's not cluttering the root of my project. Then we add this step to our PHP unit job. I'll then push this to GitHub in a new branch and see how it affects a pull request we've created. Because we're not meeting the code coverage requirements, it's failing the tests. Now there are two downsides to this simple script. The first is that we're only looking for a total code coverage and not how the current change affects this number. Because of this, it's easy to have our total code coverage drift downward over time. Ideally, what we want to do is check to see if this change is a net positive or negative for our code coverage. The other is that it's a challenge to determine what else should have code coverage added to it. Ideally, what we would want is something that shows us which lines are covered and which ones aren't. A solution to this after a word from our sponsors. PHP Storm is a cutting edge IDE tailored for PHP and web developers. If you haven't used it before, or if it's been a while since you last tried it, now's the perfect time to check it out again. It's received significant performance enhancements and has an ever-expanding feature set with new features added with every new release. If you're curious to see if it's the right fit for you, head to jetbrains.com slash phpstorm to learn more and try it out with a 30-day free trial. Code smarter, not harder. Thank you, JetBrains, for your support. Now, the solution to our problems from earlier is to use an external solution that will track our code coverage over time compare how our changes affect code coverage, and provide integration into our review software to show code that's not covered by a test. Now, there are a ton of tools that do this, but I wanted to quickly set up an example using CodeCub. They're not a sponsor of our videos, and I'm picking them because of my previous usage of them and the fact that they provide free results to open repositories on GitHub. The first thing that you want to do is set up an account on the CodeCub website. The process is very simple as you log in with your GitHub account. You'll then be brought to a screen that will contain a list of your repositories. Click on the setup repo link on the line of the repository that you're interested in. On the next screen, you'll be given a CodeCub token, which we will need to copy into the secret section of our GitHub repository. Then we'll click on the link to let us install CodeCub's application into our repository. This will allow it to post pack status messages, comment on pull requests, and become a check inside of our pull request process. Next, we're going to edit our action to upload our coverage report to code coverage by adding the code cov, code cov action action to our YAML file. Finally, when we push our main branch, we'll get back a report on the code cov website showing the current level. 25% is really bad, so let's fix that. I'm going to create a new branch so we can see how code cov shows the results inside of a pull request. Next, we'll create a test for the last name class because it has zero code coverage. It's the same as our existing test, but is using the last name class. Finally, we'll commit this new file, push the branch, and create a pull request. After the tests have run, CodeCub will report back on how the change will affect the total percentage. Now, as a maintainer of the repository, I can use this information to decide if I should accept the pull request 
If the pull request increases the cover, or at least keeps it equal, I can easily accept it. If I see a large negative change in the coverage, it's a bad sign and should be sent back. It also shows us what lines aren't covered by the change, so we can jump in and fix those before they end up lowering our project's overall code coverage. Now, if you spend any time looking at open source projects on GitHub, you'll notice a lot of them have these cool badges to show how well they're meeting their code coverage. We can have the same thing with code code. We just need to copy this snippet into our readme.md file. As a recap, code code provides a solution to validate our code coverage, integrates with GitHub pull request process, and is easy to set up. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you follow, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Other topics you would like us to cover? Let us know in the comments below or send me a message on Twitter and phpc.social at Scott Keck Warren. I would love to hear how I can help you, and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading. Thank you.